right, so it's like, you know, 12.30 at night, but because I don't sleep much, this is the stuff that runs through my head. Uh, we're going to run over some stuff on the 95F350 tow truck, uh, equipped with a 7.3. It's got an E4OD transmission, uh, four-wheel drive. And going back, when we first picked this truck up, um, it did have, or does have currently, a new Jasper Trans, new within the last year, installed, which I didn't really think anything of it at the time because E4ODs are kind of notorious for having issues, especially if you don't read the operator's manual, the owner's manual of the vehicle, where they actually tell you to turn overdrive off if you're doing a lot of around town um, under 40 mile an hour driving. From my understanding, that's something to do with the lack of proper or a large enough surface area of uh, friction material within the torque converter clutch assembly. And that most aftermarket or upgraded torque converters have more clutch material, less of a problem, less constant slipping, on off, heat buildup, whatever. Um, but what I ran into on this truck as I'm rewiring it is something, um, wasn't a, a hard fix, but it was an interesting piece of data, which uh, I really haven't run into before, but it makes me think this very likely could have been part of the reason why this truck may have had a trans put in it, other than it's a 200,000 mile tow truck. Um, so what I did was I was putting all LEDs in it. Uh, truck came to us with LEDs in it. I went with a Mirage style. I just like the lights better. But um, after I wired everything up, I noticed that with the marker and headlights off, I had faint illumination of my taillights. Um, no third brake light illumination, just taillights. So, you know, I thought that was kind of funny. I went to the junction box I had wired in, and I found, I believe it was like 7.6 volts at that point. So now, I mean... I had a rat's nest of wiring I pulled out of this thing, stuff spliced into this, that, the other thing. I had eliminated all that, gone back to clean factory wiring, uh, this, that, the other thing. So I'm like, okay, maybe I messed something up. So I pull a schematic, I start looking through, and, you know, I've got zero volts on one side of the brake switch. And, you know, the 7.6 volts on the other side of the brake switch. It's actually a light green wire. Um, we're going to go to the schematic here. So right here is our OE diagrams for this schematic, or for this system, rather. So my turn flasher and my hazard flasher, I had actually replaced those with um, sol uh, solid-state electronic flashers for the LEDs. And what was interesting was on these indicators, but only in the rear, um, not the front, because I actually have regular um, incandescent bulbs in the front. But in the rear, right down in here with these light green wires, I was actually getting this 7.2 volts. So... I start disconnecting stuff, okay? Disconnect the high mount stop, uh, disconnect the ABS shift lock actuator, shift lock resistor. And what's funny is right up here, uh, which this should be getting 12 volts with the brake, or uh, 12 volts through the fuse box. I've got 12 here, but with the brake pedal off, I've got my 7.2 volts down here, all right? Well, that, so we were sitting at 7.2 volts right here. And that was whether I measured it here, down at the PCM, ABS module, shift lock, um, even down to the, uh, in this case, this truck did not have cruise control, but uh, where the cruise control would be, uh, there was a blunt cut wire, and that also had 7.2 volts. Um, interestingly, as I unplugged certain modules and other things on there, the voltage increased. So I'm kind of running myself around, and I'm like, mm, that's weird, that's weird, that's weird. 
and actually Identifix of all things, uh, brought up the fact that apparently, even all the way back in 95, Ford actually outputs from the PCM here, um, from right here, Ford outputs a very low current. Let's see if I can write better than a two-year-old here. Outputs a low current on this light green wire to verify circuit in integrity. Um, I'm not an expert on EEC4. I do know it doesn't have the capability of setting any kind of fault codes for this that I could find. And um, I'm, I'm not really sure why they're doing this. It, unless they're somehow factoring in the resistance of, say, uh, actually, I believe this one would be an 1157 bulb. But even there, there's going to be a minimal resistance through that bulb winding going to ground. So why they're putting this current out through this PCM, I don't know. But what it was doing is because compared to an 1157, 3157 bulb, um, an LED draws substantially less amperage, which means this low current coming out of the PCM was actually able to illuminate those lights. Now, sitting at 7.2 volts, sometimes up to, you know, 8, 9 volts, will that cross the threshold? So the PCM wants to see 12 volts coming down this wire, right? When the brake switch is closed, um, we can actually see that right there. So if it sees 12 volts here and zero volts, so 12 volts is on, zero volts is off. What is our threshold between on and off. Is it 7 volts? Is it 9 volts? 11 volts? I don't know. But in theory, with running LED lights, if our threshold is, say, anything above 6 volts, and we're getting this back feed as a result of the low current coming out of the computer to verify circuit integrity, that would be enough to, A, keep torque converter clutch from... Um, fully engaging it would probably especially as the load varies um you hit the brakes you use turn signal whatever um could very well cause torque converter to not engage fully to slip um, may have intermittent cruise control problems a lot of things like that i mean it's just kind of interesting to me and as far as description goes i really couldn't find anything so, brake on off switch tells the PCM when the brakes are applied, switch is closed when the brakes are applied, open when they're released. Disengages the torque converter clutch. Failed on or not connected, torque converter clutch will not engage at less than one third throttle. So here, failed on or not connected. All right, so if that brake switch is not connected, um, I guess there is a strategy within this PCM with that current and they, they factored that out to allow it to basically default the trans shift strategy because it's not a separate TCM um, to not engage torque converter clutch at less than a third of a throttle. So why are we going on about this? I mean, it's, it's relatively simple. Um, in this case... I was actually able to alleviate the problem by putting one load resistor parallel with the light bulb. So in this case, we're going to make us a light bulb, right? And because it's an LED, we'll say it draws 0.1 amps or uh, 10 milliamps, whereas the conventional bulb may have drawn, I don't know, 1.2 amps. So what we do is we wire a load resistor in line here at whatever amperage you need to simulate the, sis the uh, load of a conventional bulb there. In this case, that got rid of my backlighting problem. That got rid of my lack of torque converter clutch engagement. 
as well as that extra voltage, um, that 7.2 volts. Now you would think, let's see, it comes out of the PCM here. You would think, one, it's a 95. Like really, is, is that necessary? But you would also think, especially Ford, we've done a lot better in the future, right? They're a lot more advanced. Um, LED lights are, are almost inherently assumed on any new vehicle. So, is it something we still have to worry about? Do I need to learn strategies? Do I have to worry about modifying things? Well, I know a lot of people don't do upfitting, which is uh, modifying a vehicle, uh, mainly the light and medium duty trucks for different operations, be it a utility body, mason dump, uh, regular dump bed, flatbed, crane, whatever it may be. But even uh, even modern vehicles, uh, between bulb outage detection and everything else, um, they run into this quite a bit. So let me just do uh, this real quick. So right here. Uh, Upfit it with LED taillights and uh, may exhibit a fast flash turn signal indication. Body control module can be figured for a fixed turn signal load or a variable load. Um, use of lamps that fall outside the BCM's fixed load capacity, uh, much like our 95. So our 95 was using a fixed load, figuring a uh, exact resistance, both um, static, I'll call it static resistance, which is, you know, minimal through a light bulb, but regardless, as well as dynamic, which would be the bulb illuminated. Um, that's a fixed load. Or, uh, I'm sorry, a variable load, because as that light bulb and that filament illuminates, as it heats up, resistance increases, so that's a dynamic load. Whereas in this case, an LED is going to draw the same regardless. There's not really any heat dissipation, and therefore you're not increasing the amperage through that heat. So, I mean, we're going... Many years into the future, we're still running into this. Uh, tch, 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 tch. Boom. Trailer tow message for people accessing or tapping into factory circuits. Okay, same thing. Yet another Ford. Um, all this is actually available through the Ford Bodybuilder site. Uh, I'll pull that up in a second here. But right here, upfitters using the trailer tow circuits for body lighting on a chassis cab, box delete, box removal. Uh, need to turn this feature off, which is basically bulb outage detection. Now, in this case, once again, the only strategy they're saying is we're going to have a trailer tow message. Now, with modern vehicles, there's so many different sensors, uh, sensors brake pedal position sensor, a brake on off, uh, master cylinder pressure switches that the control modules are probably well able to run multiple plausibility checks in order to eliminate a simple bulb outage causing a transmission issue or other undesirable operation. Um, yet Ford, Chevy, Dodge, um, everybody who's looking at any kind of vehicle that's possibly going to be modified with additional lighting and uh, other accessories has really been going out of their way to make what I call a uh, blunt cut provision wires. So tagging separate circuitry for lighting, especially LED lighting or additional amperage loads on there. It's tagging them out of a separate module on a lot of new stuff, separate harness to really alleviate issues. So it's just kind of bouncing around in my head that one, didn't think Ford of all people had that level of technology in 95. Um, anybody who knows more about the EEC4 system and um, why exactly they're sending that small output current out, I'd love to hear about it, video, manual, whatever it may be. Um, but we had that technology in 95, perhaps even earlier than that. And really, all the way now in 2022, um, we're still running into unexpected or undesired results as uh, an outcome of adding LEDs, adding different outfits, 
modifying things. I mean, how many people have dealt with... Uh, I'm going to use a sprinter van just because uh, I run into that quite a bit. Sprinter vans with bulb outages or bulbs that don't work because they are not the exact correct bulb for that application. Resistance is a little too high, a little too low. As soon as it goes to flash, so shuts off the driver to protect the circuitry and the expensive module. Bam. And if you're not familiar with strategies, even, I mean, we talk about strategies a lot, but if you're not familiar with strategies, even down to bulb outage, bulb outage detection, um, circuit integrity checks, it, it's something, everything runs off of a strategy now. Everything just about has a fail safe and it doesn't always make sense. So, like I said, wasn't really a, uh, was wandering around, couldn't sleep, and decided I'd just kind of go on a little rant and have a little fun and see if maybe we can uh, spark some discussion about this and see if uh, anybody knows more, wants to give more, or, you know, if it's a topic worth dealing with. I mean, there's so many different strategies from um, GM, the commonly known unplugged the mass airflow sensor for a default engine strategy, to Ford, Mercedes, BMWs, um, bulb outage detection, shutting down drivers that detect an overcurrent, situ overcurrent situation to protect that module. Um, Chrysler's, I did a whole video series on a um, not well documented plausibility um, strategy where if even one neutral safety switch on certain Chrysler products disagrees with all the other neutral safety inputs, that vehicle will not crank. So, I mean, yes, we have to understand electricity. We have to understand wiring, communication networks, general layout and desired operation of vehicles. But just as much, we really have to delve in, start learning strategies more and more and more as well as, you know, document strategies. You run into something a little weird that you haven't run into before, write it down, keep it in the notebook. You never know when it may come in handy. So, yeah, it was a long rant, but I, I haven't really done a whole lot of anything on here recently, so we'll put it out there, and uh, hopefully we'll have something a little more interesting and uh, something I actually have laid out, organized, planned out. Um, actually, I do have a cam sensor issue on this truck. Maybe I'll go into, you know, an actual in-depth cam sensor diagnosis. Some of the, uh, ah, it's been beat to death a million times, but you never know. One person learns something or we discover something kind of cool with the failure mode, we'll do it. So... That's pretty much it. You guys have all listened to me ramble enough. Have a good one.